Okay, thank you, Jeff. At this time, we'll open it up for questions. If you can uh, raise your hand and I will call on you. Start with Dan Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Uh, Jeff, for you, for you really quick, obviously, um, you know, Chuma was still part of the Magic family. Um, what have you learned about him over the last year uh, from talking to people who've worked closely with him um, that maybe you didn't know necessarily on draft night? Uh, I didn't know like he was a good rapper. <laughs> but my daughters clued me in on that at the dinner table. So um, um, there, there, we had done so much work as we try to do every year on the draft. And I can just tell you that Everybody, everybody that that Chuma's crossed paths with as he was growing up, and obviously, um, you know, well, having spoken to a lot of people at Auburn, um, just just raved about, you know, just how giving he was, how selfless, what a great teammate, what a great worker, and um, and his IQ on the court is is um, kind of uh, goes goes without saying. So when you compare when you when you pair all of those um, traits and you put them into you know, a young guy who's got a lot of work ahead of him and, and whose, whose path is just beginning, you know, you, you like to, as we always say, bet on the person. And um, so, so I don't know about a whole lot of new things. Just getting to know Chuma over the years has been a real delight. He's very candid. He's very honest. He's very sincere. He's committed to the team. And those were all the things that we had uh, expected when we drafted him. Josh Robbins, The Athletic. Chuma, thanks for doing this. Uh, what, is, what does it mean to you to finally have signed that contract and to now take this next step forward? It means a lot, of course, mainly because this is something that everybody wants to do. You know, everybody, as a little kid, they start, I want to be in the NBA, I want to be in the NFL. I wanna, they, everybody has some type of dream that they want to go through with. And for me to actually live out that dream is uh, really a dream. It's also a blessing. So now I can do nothing but try to take advantage of every opportunity that I can get. Okay. Thank you, Chuma. I know I know it's a little difficult if you could just speak up when as we go through this a little bit. Yeah, just a little louder. You're okay. fine. Uh, go back to Dan Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Chuma, what have you learned about the Orlando Magic organization over the last year from, from being in Lakeland and, and the culture around this this organization? Basically, that they're very, I would like to say, family orientated. You know, they care about each other dearly. And, um, you know, everybody around here is very cool people. And uh, everybody's hard workers and, you know, they just real cool teammates. Go back to Josh Robbins. Yeah, Chuma, I apologize. I don't. I can't speak for anybody else, but I couldn't hear the answer when I asked you the prior question. Uh, so, if you don't mind, may I please repeat that prior question, uh, which was, uh, what what did it mean to you to finally sign the contract and to get um, now to be moving forward toward a season? Uh, it meant a lot, you know. For it meant a lot for me because every kid has their dreams of becoming an NBA player or becoming an NFL player or just living out their dreams so in any type of way. And for me to actually be doing that and living out my dream is like a dream come true. And it's like a blessing. So like now I just got to take advantage of every opportunity that's given to me. Jamie Say, WKMG. Hey, Chuma. Just wondering uh, how the knee is feeling and what kind of basketball activity uh, you've been doing recently. It's feeling good. I'm sure it's feeling stronger. It's feeling uh, very stable. And right now, I've just been working out just uh, skill drills, conditioning, just stuff like that. Go back to Dan Savage. Chuma, I know as you were going through the rehab process, you came across a, a number of your Magic teammates. Just curious, um, you know, which guys have helped you along the way and, and what kind of advice uh, they've given you? Um, well, I, I really haven't been around 
a lot of the teammates because everybody's just now starting to come back. So we haven't really had a lot of communication going on. It's just been mainly about working and just keep working. Even when I even when I get a contract, I hear a lot of guys. Um, once they get a lot of money or once they get the contract, they kind of start slacking off and stuff. So just to keep working, like 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 nothing's happened. Roy Perry, Orlando Sentinel. Huh? Hey, Truman, it's good Roy to Perry. see you. Thanks for doing this. You know, obviously, you, you know, you put in a lot of basketball work, but what were some things you learned about yourself from, a, you know, from a mental standpoint? And, and how much did you lean on your family, you know, during your recovery? Mm, you know, I learned, I learned a lot about myself, mainly how important uh, faith is during, um, down this journey. Um, Faith is very important. I've been getting closer with, you know, God during this journey and just having a lot of patience. Um, I've, I've always been a patient person, but this rehab has taught me to be even more patient, even through, even when I didn't want to rehab, because at some, at some rehab points, you get to a point where it's like, oh, this is easy. Let's do something else. But it's like, it's just a lot of repetition, a lot of repetition to get back to where you want to be. So you got to be very, very patient and you just got to always see the light at the end of the tunnel during this process. And I feel like I've done that and hopefully it'll pay off in the long run. Evan Fitzgerald, Fox 35. How much opportunity over the last year or so have you had a chance to, to get to know the guys in the locker room, to get to know your coaches? Obviously in the last eight months have been, the weirdest eight months any of us have, have been through and that I'm sure through a wrench and some of that stuff, but how much have you gotten a chance to, to really get a feel for your place and, and what your place will be in the organization and the guys that you'll be playing with? Um, I mean, like I said, uh, I don't know. Uh, a lot of players are just now starting to come back in. So I haven't really been with any other players. But um, hopefully I'll just come in and work hard and, and yeah. Okay, that's right. Jamie, did you have another question? Yeah, I did. Um, Chuma, just wondering, uh, do, you, do you have any idea how much you'll be able to do when training camp starts? Um, like where, where you're at, like how much participation, what you can do when it starts? Um, no, I actually don't, but hopefully I'll be able to do everything. Um, I know this is my first time having a major injury, but I've heard that um, after coming off a major injury, you know, you'll have some restrictions um, going forward until until everything really checks out right. So, but hopefully, um, I intend to do everything in the camps and everything, but hopefully uh, everything turns out good. But I probably will have some restrictions, but I don't know any of that yet. Josh Robbins, The Athletic. Shuma, you haven't played a game in, I think, 19 months. Uh, how how much uh, uh, rust do you expect to have after that kind of layoff, and, and how important will it be for you to be patient? Um, rust, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how, I don't, I don't know how I will um, react to the game when I come back. It's kind of like, no, nah, I don't want to say that, but... Um, Hopefully, hopefully I won't be that rusty though, because you know I've been doing this for, I've been doing this for a long time. But then again, this is all new to me, so hopefully I won't be that rusty, because it's still just basketball. It's just with um, the best players in the world now, so hopefully I won't be that rusty. Just for the record, it's been 598 days since Chuma's played. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> Mr. Weltman asked me to look that up today. Um, go back to Evan Fitzgerald. Oh, sorry, just forgot to put my hand down. My That's bad. That's okay. Uh, Dan Savage. Chuma, just how eager are you to get, to get back to to team activities, especially you know as Joel just said, uh, you know it's been 598 some some odd days, and to, to you know finally put on that magic uniform to, to and to go forth and practice and play. I've been very eager, especially like, excuse me, 
Um, earlier in the process, people people have been asking me like, um, I bet you ready to uh, hurry up and get on the court, get on the court. But that's when I was still going th um, through that rehab process and going through those repetitions. But now that I'm cranking everything up in my rehab and on the court and skills and stuff, I've been starting to get, you know, I've been starting to get them itchy palms to get back on the court to see how much I have developed. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully the work that I've been putting in is sure. Okay. Um, Jamie, did you have another question? Yeah, I had another question. Um, uh, Chuma, have you had uh, many conversations with Coach Clifford? And, um, you know, from what you saw, you know, from last season and in the bubble, do you have a good idea of kind of the coaching staff's expectations and a style of play uh, that the Magic use? I've had some conversations with him and also people tell me about him. But, um, you know, I feel he, he just focused a lot on defense. Um, how well you can move your feet and how well you could close out just defense, defense, defense. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. But All right. he just turned to offense. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Um, Josh Robbins, the Athletic. Chuma, I'm curious how much of a re how much have you acted as a resource for Ji now that he's dealing with the same injury that you dealt with, and and how can you try to to help him along? First started, I used to like I, when he first started, I seen him doing some of the stuff that I used to do. I was like I used to say, oh man, I remember doing that stuff. Man, that used to be hard. It used to be hard, but he he got everything under control. You know, he he actually enjoys the process because he he he. We talked about it before. He says that he loved what he loved most about the rehab process is that you know it's hard at first, but as you keep on doing it, you start to see progress. And then like you can't wait for the next step because you know it's gonna be hard at first. But then again, you're gonna see that progress. And then it's like it's hard at first, and it becomes easy. Then the next step is hard, then it becomes easy. So he really enjoying it, you know, and his, his faith is really strong in that area. So he, he he's going to be good. Chris Koff, 24 Flicks. Chris, did you have a question? You could unmute yourself. There we go. Sorry. Um, quick question. Uh, you mentioned that you got closer to God while you were waiting and doing your rehab. Can you talk a little bit about that? It was just, it was just, um, you know, just reading the Bible on my downtime and just fixing areas in my life to where I didn't know at first, because I always, I grew up in a Christian home, you know, we was all Christians, we all went to church, but I couldn't always go to church because I had games on Sundays. So my mom always went to church though, but, um. But now this this was just a time to um get closer to him and just grow my faith stronger and and by doing that, you know, it always kept me on a positive end and always kept me looking forward and looking at the light at the end of the tunnel. And uh you know, it also um it was making my life go by faster. Now we already here, so everything's going mm -hmm. good. <laughs> All right. A couple more Josh Cohn, OrlandoMagic.com. With the uh, NBA draft being tomorrow, uh, what are your fondest memories from last year's draft when the Magic chose you 16th overall? Yeah, what is my what is my what memories? Uh, just what are your fondest memories from from last year when you were picked by the Magic? Just having a little family get together, and um... oh, I think you're on mute. Can you hear me? There we go, bud. Yep. Oh, no, I was just um, having all my family around and having them enjoy the moment. And uh, it was just a little, it was just a fun night that night. My, I remember my agent calling me and saying that something's about to happen. And I didn't know what he was talking about. I had a clue, but I didn't know. But um, yeah, that was really it. <laughs> <laughs> Any final questions? Okay, well, fin final question, um, Dan Savage. Chuma, you know, we've, we've heard a lot from other people about what you'll bring to, to the NBA team. 
uh, when you look at your first season with the with the Magic, what do you think are your skills that'll immediately translate to the court? Uh, mute again, Chuma. Hear me? There we go, bud. I feel like it's my ability to be able to stay in front of my defender. You know, as I'm, I'm working on that now, you know, sliding my feet, closeouts, and just defensive stuff. And then I've also been working on my shots, so hopefully – my shot in practice would translate to my shots in the games. And, and yeah, just getting my teammates involved and just, just having fun because it's – I love to play basketball because it's fun at the end of the day. So that's that's really the main thing, just having fun and trying to win games. Great. All right. Thank you, Chuma. We appreciate everyone's time. Uh, if you could just be on the lookout, George will send you links for tomorrow night. And also the MBA will be sending out links um, that you can plug into to get uh, interviews and so forth. So thank you for your time and uh, we will be in touch. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.